Now we know, already know that y equals root 3 cos x plus sine x and we saw that this was identical to 2 sine of x plus pi upon 3. So in order to find x between 0 and 2 pi radians when y is 1, what I'm going to do is put this part equal to 1. So that's basically where we start. So we've got therefore 2 sine of x plus pi upon 3 is going to equal 1. So the next thing we need to do is just divide both sides by 2 and so we're therefore going to have the sine of x plus pi upon 3 is going to equal a half. And to get what x plus pi upon 3 is we now need to inverse sine both sides. So if we take the inverse sine to both sides we end up with x plus pi upon 3 equals the inverse sine of a half. Now if you do the inverse sine of a half on your calculator, make sure you're in radians mode because we're dealing with radians, you should find that you get pi upon 6, the equivalent of 30 degrees. So therefore we've got x plus pi upon 3 equals pi upon 6 radians. Now before we go on and just work out what x is by subtracting pi upon 3 from both sides, what you need to do is check out all the other possible solutions. And there's two ways that we can do this. We can either draw a graph or we could use the quadrant diagram method. Okay. Now I personally prefer the quadrant diagram method but I'm going to uh, do the graphical way first of all because I know there's a lot of people out there that do do the graphs. Um, when it comes to the quadrant diagram, which I'll do at the end, you can go on my website if you're unsure about it. There's plenty of tutorials on the quadrant diagram under trigonometry. But if we're drawing a graph, the graph of y equals sine x, let's just mark it up here, we should know that it starts from the origin, goes up to 1 at 90 degrees or pi upon 2 radians, drop downs to, to 0 at 180 degrees or pi radians, 270 degrees minus 1 or the equivalent of 3 pi upon 2 radians and back up 360 degrees here or 2 pi radians and it's going to carry on like that okay like that not, not a great graph but I hope you get the idea okay let's just mark in those key points not there radians pi radians and 2 pi radians at that point, that point, and that point. Okay, and it went up to one there. So, if we're doing the inverse sine of a half, and it came to pi upon six, on this diagram, that was a half. Go along here to the curve down here. This was pi upon six radians. So there's another solution if we carry on across to this point on the curve and project down. We can see that by symmetry of this particular part of the curve, this portion here, pi upon 6 units in, we've got to come back from pi, pi upon 6. And that's going to give me a value of pi take away pi upon 6, which is 5 pi upon 6. So that's another possible solution here. Now it's very tempting to stop at this point, but you've got to be very careful because there is the possibility of another solution if we go beyond the 2 pi. Don't dismiss this because if we go beyond the 2 pi, project down here, this angle here is going to be pi upon 6 units or radians beyond the 2 pi here. In other words, 2 pi plus pi upon 6 is going to be 13 pi over 6. Let's just mark it in there, 13 pi over 6. And if we put that in, you'll see that in a moment when we take pi upon 3 from 13 pi upon 6, our solution for x is going to be back within the range 0 to 2 pi. So if we do that, if we take pi upon 3 from both sides, okay, if we take it away from the pi upon 6, what we end up with is minus pi upon 6. Do the same to 
5 pi upon 6 take away pi upon 3, you end up with pi over 2. And the 13 pi over 6 take away pi upon 3 is 11 pi over 6. Now, when it comes to giving our solutions in the range 0 to 2 pi, you can see that this value is out of range, being negative. So we only have two values left, pi upon 2 and the 11 pi over 6. So they are our two solutions. Now I did say that we could do this by using the quadrant rule. And this is the way that I prefer doing it because I find it's a lot quicker. You don't have to be bothered drawing the graph. And in the usual way, this is naught radians, this is pi upon 2 radians, pi radians, 3 pi upon 2 and 2 pi. And what I'd look for is where sine is positive because we've got positive a half. And sine is always positive in the first quadrant, that's this one here, and the second quadrant, that's this one over here. And I'd mark two lines equally inclined to the horizontal, like that, marking these two values as being the same angle. And then I'd say, what angles do I need? Well, let's start from here, turn in this direction to the first blue line, so that's this one here. And so this angle here is a possible x plus pi upon 3. So mark that in as x plus pi upon 3. Then I'd look for another angle and that would be starting from here, always start from this, this line, turn in an anti-clockwise direction to the next blue line, that's that one here. And this would be another possible x plus pi upon 3. Then I would inverse sine a half, making sure I was in radians mode, and we saw that it came out with pi upon 6. So I'd know that this little blue angle here was pi upon 6. And because this blue angle is the same as this one, this one here would be pi upon 6. So when it came to working out x plus pi upon 3, the red angle, I would know that it was the same as pi upon 6, so I'd mark it in. And for the green one, I can see that that would be pi radians, half a turn, minus the little blue one in here, pi upon 6. So that would be 5 pi upon 6. And that's what we did graphically up here. Half a turn, pi, minus that little bit there, pi upon 6, which is this little angle in here, giving us the 5 pi upon 6. But then I would have realised that there is that chance that we could start from here go round one complete turn, 2 pi radians, and carry on beyond that by pi upon 6, giving us this 13 pi upon 6, knowing that when I subtract the pi upon 3, it's going to pull me back in range. All right? So that's the diagram that I would have personally done rather than the graphical method, purely just because I think it's a lot quicker. But that's up to you okay to make the choice but there you go there's our answers x equals pi upon 2 11 pi upon 6 at the end of the day and so that brings us now to the end of this question